Whatever we came to conquer the spirit of truth, for him, we are present to us all things. The treasure and blessings and the giver of life, and we bind in us and cleanse us from every impurity, and save our souls a little. Lord God of the highest, and on earth peace among men for good will. Lord God of the highest, and on earth peace among men for good will. O Lord, open all my lips, and my mouth shall show forth. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of our love and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the holy churches of God, and for the union of them all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy monastery, for those who enter with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For his parents and our metropolitan chief one, for his eminence our Archbishop Nathaniel, for the honorable priest of the Akron in Christ, for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the president of our country, for all civil authorities, and for our armed forces everywhere, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our abbess, for the Christophora, and for the sisterhood of this holy monastery, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this city, for every city, village, and country, and for the faithful dwelling in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For travelers by land, by sea, by air, for the sick and the suffering, for captives and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For seize the Lord, for the abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. In memory of our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theodosius, and never virgin Mary of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and our life unto Christ our God. Lord, oh, Lord our God, thy power cannot compare, thy glory cannot be understood, thy mercy cannot be measured, thy love for man cannot be expressed. Look down upon us and upon this holy house with pity, O Master, and impart the riches of thy mercy and thy compassion to us and to those who pray with us. From the to all glory, honor, and worship to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages.
Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? This, he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and he had the money box and he used to take what was put in it. And Jesus said, let her alone. She has kept this day for the day of my burial. For the poor you have with you always, but me you do not have always. Now a great many of the Jews knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but they might also see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priest plotted to put Lazarus to death also, because on account of him, many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. And the next day, a great multitude that had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees, went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. And when Jesus, when he had found the young donkey on it, sat upon it, and as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him, that they had done these things to him. Therefore the people who were with him, when he called Lazarus out of his tomb and raised him from the dead, or witness. For this reason, the people also met him, because he heard that he had done this sign. King of Israel, the Lord, is now in your midst. You shall see disaster no more. In that day it shall be said of Jerusalem, Do not fear Zion, let your hands not be weak. The Lord your God is in your midst. The Mighty One will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with His love. He will rejoice over you with singing. And in Zechariah, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. And he adds one more that has nothing specific to do with the feast day, but with salvation. In the 11th verse he said, and you, by the blood of your covenant, have sent forth your prisoners out of the pit that has no water. That has revelation for us later on during the celebration of Holy Week when Christ went to Hades and freed the souls of those who were held captive there. So we see this in celebrating this wonderful feast day of Palm Sunday of Jesus coming into the midst of the people riding on a fool of an ass. <coughs> the people had 
gathered in Jerusalem for the Passover, and they were looking for Jesus, both because of the great works and teachings that they had heard about, and some had seen, but also because of the miracle of the resurrection of Lazarus. They started to talk among themselves a little bit. Is this the Messiah? Is this the one that we are waiting for? Is our hope finally going to be realized that the Lord has shown mercy on his people and he has sent the Messiah to us to bring us to eternal salvation, but to bring us to a life filled with no more sickness or sorrow or sighing, no more dependence on the Roman government, no more dependence upon any outward people, but a return to our glory of the past through the times of David and Solomon and Saul when the Hebrew people flourished upon the earth. And they had this thought in the back of their mind, is this is what is going to happen to us? Is this Messiah going to bring this back to us and give us peace? So when they heard, and they went with this kind of expectation in mind, when they heard that Christ was entering the city, they went out to meet him with palm branches, they laid their garments on the ground, and they shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. <clears throat> now, if we remember at the very outset of the ministry of Jesus, and also during the ministry of St. John the Baptist, one of the first things that was said was, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. So at the outset of his ministry, Jesus proclaimed the kingdom of God, and he announced that the powers of this age to come were already active, and they were present now in this present age. Now we can refer back to the Gospel of St. Luke, when the Lord performed a miracle, and he healed the son of a widow, the widow of Nain. And people had said that we have never seen anything like this before. And some of John the Baptist's brethren were there with him when they saw this. And they went back to John, and they said, these wonderful things are happening. And John said to them, well, go back to him again and ask, are you the one? Are you the Messiah? Are you the one that we're waiting for? Or do we have to wait a little while longer before something happens? So they did. And they went back and they talked to Christ. And they asked him those questions. And Christ said to the apostles of John, Go back and tell John. This is what you will tell him. The deaf hear. The lame walk. The blind see. Lepers are cleansed. The dead are raised, and the gospel is preached to the poor. So they were joyous. They said the Messiah had not come in their understanding of it. And they went out later on then to ultimately become disciples of Christ. We know. I'm kind of like a little bit of a history buff, and I always like to put certain happenings into perspective from a historical standpoint. We've heard so much always, especially during Lent and about after Lent, about the Messiah. Exactly, now, who is this Messiah? Is it, is it something new? Is it something that's radical? Is it what? But there were talks and teachings about the Messiah dating back to the time of Genesis. There was always people saying, the Lord is going to be coming, he's going to be mighty. Not in battle, he'll be mighty in the spirit. He'll be showing love and mercy and forgiveness. And the whole concept of the Messiah was based on the spiritual realization of the life of man. Well, you know, certain things happen. 
Now, even with the abundance of all the prophecies about the Messiah in the Old Testament and all the writings, even during the time of the earth and life of Christ, many of the Jews did not have the right idea or the right notion about him or what it was to be expecting a Messiah. The reason for this was that many Jews could not rise to the spiritual understanding of the messianic prophets, the messianic prophecies. For instance, you know, about, first of all, the godly nature of the Messiah, about the necessity of, of a moral rebirth, about the grace of God working in the kingdom of the Messiah, about people being brought to the knowledge of the truth. If we know a little bit about history, the period from the 3rd century B.C. to the beginning of the 2nd century A.D. was a time of very, very intense struggle for the Hebrew nation. And it had many, many different wars and problems and difficulties. And they were constantly trying to work out a way that they could have their own political independence. Now this very difficult struggle and a lot of the hardships that were connected with it helped to develop among the Jews the hope for better times. When the Messiah will defeat the enemies of the Hebrew nation, they envisioned at that time that with the enthroning of the Messiah, the glad times will be back, the good times will be back, that we have a life full of material abundance, we'll have whatever we need, because of such a, a very narrow, national, and what one writer even called a utilitarian desire, the Lord Jesus Christ himself avoided publicly proclaiming himself as the Messiah. But on the other hand, he often quoted the ancient prophecies that spoke about the Messiah as a spiritual leader. And with this, he was trying to return the faith of the Jews to the truth, to the right path, to bring them to the knowledge of salvation. But it didn't work. Because the Jews were desiring to have the Messiah as a worldly king. They were dreaming of earthly blessings. And in fact, some of them were basically, as one writer put it, they were very irritated by the meek and at times the very humble appearance of Jesus Christ. His teachings about meekness, about love, and especially about love of your enemies, and about striving for the heavenly kingdom, was basically very, very alien to the people of that time. Now the Jewish leaders who were during the course of that time, those three years that Christ preached, didn't quite know how to get rid of this whom they called a very undesirable teacher and miracle worker. They feared the loss of their own influence on the people. They didn't want a loving, kind Messiah. They didn't want someone to bring truth and happiness and joy to their life. But they wanted a political leader. They wanted a powerful king to lead them to earthly glory and to overcome the Roman government to overcome any and all problems and difficulties that they were facing now in their life of subjugation to a foreign power. Finally, a, a convenient opportunity arose when Judas, who was one of the twelve apostles, offered the high priest his services and helped them deliver Jesus Christ to his judgment. As Metropolitan Anthony Bloom notes in one of his sermons, he said, The beginning of Christ's passion is today's triumphal procession. The people expected a king, a leader, and instead they found the Savior of their souls. Nothing embitters a person so much as a lost, as a disappointed hope. And that explains why the people 
who could receive him joyously on this day of Palm Sunday, who had witnessed the raising of Lazarus, who saw Christ's miracles, who heard his teachings, who admired every word, and they were ready to become his disciples as long as he brought them to a physical victory, as long as he brought them material wealth. They broke away from him, they turned their backs on him, and a few days later, these same people who were saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, were simply shouting out with everybody else, crucify him, crucify him. And Christ spent all those days in loneliness, knowing basically what was in store for him. He was abandoned basically by almost everyone, except the mother of God who stood silently as she had done throughout her entire life, participating in his tragic ascent to the cross. She who had accepted the Annunciation, the Good Tidings, but who also had accepted in the very great silence the prophecy of Saint Simeon, who said that a sword would pierce her heart. So for us today, Palm Sunday calls us to behold our King, the Word of God made flesh. We're called to see Him not simply as the one who came to us riding on a coal, on a coal but as the one who is always present, who is present in the church, who is coming ceaselessly to us in power and glory at the Eucharist, in every prayer, in every sacrament, in every act of love and kindness and mercy that we show. Our life isn't based on living in this world. And if we take the true meaning of the word Messiah from the Old Testament and keep it going into the New Testament, it's not a materialistic thing. It's a spiritual thing. It brings us to the knowledge of the truth. The whole concept, the whole reaction, the whole reason for Christ's life on the earth was to die. To die of the death, to take away the sting of death, and to bring us to eternal salvation. And ultimately, as the Gospel said this morning, even the disciples didn't understand it. They ran away. Everybody ran. No one stayed, because they didn't understand. It was only after the resurrection after the day of Pentecost, when they were fully knowledgeable, they fully understood that they were able to go out to preach and to teach. But it's a very difficult thing, and we already know. We understand what the truth is. The most important for us, thing for us now today is to live the truth, is to accept Christ as our Savior, as we all do, but more than anything else, to show love, to show respect, to show honor to each other. As Christ said, He didn't come to be served, but He came to serve others. Christ is in us. Let us sing our soul with all our mind. Let us sing. O oh Lord, have mercy. O oh Lord, Almighty God of our fathers, we pray to you. Hear us and have mercy. Oh Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, O oh God, according to your great goodness. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Hear us and have mercy. Oh Lord, have mercy, O oh Lord. Okay, we pray. 
praying for us, the answer of the call that seek on, for the resurrection of Nathaniel, for a priest against and all the clergy, and for all of our brethren in Christ. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord. Again, we pray for the President of our country, for all civil authorities, and for our armed forces everywhere. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our Abbess Mother Christophora, for the sisterhood of this holy monastery, for their health and for their salvation.
depart, depart, catechumens, all that our catechumens depart, let no catechumen remain. Let us the faithful again and again in peace pray unto the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, for thy grace. Wisdom, we thank thee, O Lord, God of hosts, was a countess worthy to stand even now before the holy altar, to fall down before thy compassion for our sins and the errors of all your people. And enable us also, whom you have placed in this service, by the power of your Holy Spirit, blamelessly and without offense. In the pure witness of our conscience, to call upon you at all times and in every place, and that hearing us, you may be merciful to us according to the multitude of your great goodness. We are here to all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Again and again. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, for thy grace. Lord have mercy. Wisdom, again and oftentimes we fall down before you, O God, who loves mankind. That looking down upon our petition, you would cleanse our souls and bodies from all defilement of flesh and spirit and grant us to stand blameless without condemnation before thy holy altar. Grant also that those who pray with us, O God, growth in life and faith and spiritual understanding. Grant them to worship thee blamelessly with fear and love, to partake without condemnation of thy holy mysteries, and to be counted worthy of thy heavenly kingdom. That, Lord, though is by thy might, we may ascribe glory unto thee. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages.
and I'll lay aside your own cares. For we marry to find the king of all that comes as a slave to all the ladies of the world. Let us so mystically represent the pyramid of Christ in the head of the life giving the day. Now lay aside our earthly cares, and we may raise the light of King of all who comes to this day of the Lord. Let us so mystically represent the pyramid of the day of Christ in the head of the life giving the day. Now lay aside all our earthly cares, and we may raise the light of King of all who comes to this day. As we had a good sequel in Archbishop of Washington, Metropolitan of Water in Canada, His Eminence Nathaniel, Archbishop of Detroit, Archbishop of the Romanian Episcopal in America, for Abbas Holy Christophora, and for the Sisterhood of the Sony Monastery, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. For the President of our country, for all civil authorities, enabled by the American people, and for our armed forces everywhere, and for those who are in harm's way, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. For the founders and the benefactors of this holy monastery, for all those who abide therein, for those who are in sickness, ill health, and in suffering, for those who have departed this life before us in blessed memory, especially the newly presented servants of God, the Pearl Presbyter Thomas and Priest Matthew. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages, and especially pray for the Metropolitan Paul and Archbishop John who are being held captive for their safety and for their salvation. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. For those who are in the priesthood and monastic order of the diaconate, and for our subdeacons, leaders, and servers, and for all the Orthodox Christians, may the Lord God remember you in his kingdom. Always, now, and ever, and unto ages of Asia.
bless thee, to praise thee, and to give thanks to thee, and to worship thee in every place of thy dominion. For thou art God ineffable, inconceivable, invisible, incomprehensible, ever existing, and eternal the same. Thou art thy only begotten Son, and thy Holy Spirit. Thou art those who brought us from non existence into being. When we had fallen away, they raised us up again, and did not cease to do all things until thou hast brought us up to heaven and hast endowed us with thy kingdom which is to come. For all these things we give thanks to thee, to thy only begotten Son, and to thy Holy Spirit, for all things of which we know and which we know not, for they manifest or unseen. And we thank thee for this liberty, which thou hast found worthy to accept at our hands, though there stand by the thousands of our angels and host of angels, the cherubim, seraphim, six-winged many eyed who soar aloft born on their pinions, singing the triumphant hymn, shouting, proclaiming, and saying, Blood 
of your Christ. Amen. James and Mother Grace, and your most holy spirit. Amen. 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 And those who partake of the so we mention the sins of everlasting fulfilling of the kingdom of heaven. For boldness for the name of God, for judgment or the condemnation. Again, we offer this reasonable worship to those who have fallen asleep in the faith, ancestors, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, and cynics, for every righteous spirit that has been made perfect in faith. And especially for our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. Blameless, blameless. 
zealous and peaceful, and a good defense before the great judgment seat of Christ, let us ask of the Lord. Having asked for the unity of the faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and each other and our life unto Christ our God. Unto thee we commend our whole life and our helpful master who loves mankind. We ask thee, we pray to thee, and we supplicate thee. Make us worthy to partake of the heavenly and awesome mysteries of this sacred and spiritual table to the pure conscience for the remission of our sins, for the forgiveness of our transgressions, for the communion of the Holy Spirit, for the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, for boldness towards thee, but not for judgment or condemnation. And make us worthy, O Master, that with boldness and without condemnation we may dare to call upon thee, the heavenly God as Father, and to say,
I believe in the Lord, and I confess that I am truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. And I believe also that this is truly thy own most pure body, and that this is truly thy own precious blood. Therefore I pray thee, have mercy upon me, and forgive my transgressions, both voluntary and involuntary, of word and of deed, Make me knowledge of ignorance, and make me worthy to partake without condemnation of thy most pure mysteries, for the remission of my sins, and thy delight everlasting. Amen. Of thy mystical supper, O Son of God, accept me today as a communicant, for I will not speak of thy mysteries to thy enemies, neither like Judas will I give thee a kiss, but like the thief will I confess thee. Remember me, O Lord, in thy kingdom. May the communion of thy holy mysteries be neither to my judgment nor to my condemnation, O Lord, but to the healing of soul and body. Amen.
in the fear of God, and with faith and love, draw near. Master and benefactor, 
to the outcast from this life in the hope of eternal life, and so attain to everlasting rest through the voice of those who feast is unceasing, and the gladness of those who behold the unspeakable beauty of thy countenance is unending, for thou art the true desire and ineffable joy of those who love thee, O Christ our God, and to and all creation sings thy praise forever. Amen. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. We have seen the true light. We have received the heavenly spirit. We have found the true faith. Let us attend, having partaken of the divine, holy, most pure, immortal, heavenly, life creating, and awesome mysteries of Christ. Let us worthily give thanks unto the Lord. Oh, Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O oh God, by thy grace. Oh, Lord have mercy. Asking that the whole day be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us commend ourselves and each other. And our life unto Christ our God. Oh, we thank you, Master, who loves mankind, benefactor of our souls, that thou hast made us worthy this day of thy heavenly and immortal mysteries. Make straight our path, strengthen us in thy fear. Guard our life, make firm our steps through the prayers and intercessions of the glorious Theotokos and of the Virgin Mary and of all thy saints. Without our sanctification unto thee, we ascribe glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Let us depart in peace. In the name of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. <laughs> Blessed and sanctify us, those who put their trust in thee. Save thy people and bless thy inheritance. Preserve the fullness of thy church. Sanctify those who are the beauty of thy house. Glorify them and return by thy divine power. And forsake us not, but our hope in thee. Give peace to thy world and thy churches, to all thy priests, to those in civil authority, and to all thy people. For every good gift and every perfect gift is above. Coming now from the Father of lights, to you we ascribe glory, thanksgiving, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord, Through his grace and love for mankind, 
always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory to thee, O Christ, our God and our hope. Glory to thee. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages.